Greetings, salutations, and all good things in between. What's up, everyone? Matt here. Sorry for the late beginning here. Having a little technical difficulties with the live stream. So, hey, happy holidays. Hope you had a great week getting a lot of stuff done. Um, App Sheet's been pretty fun this week for me. I've been doing a lot of fun stuff. I got fun stuff planned for next week. I'll, I'll talk about that later on in the stream. Uh, what do we got going on today, right? So we've got just a we've got uh, just a few things. There's a couple answers that I'm going to go over that people put out there. Uh, not much on the app sheet front, uh, but there was something pretty cool that I figured out this week that I'll share with you guys. Um, of course, I'm going to continue the ongoing series of Quick Chart and how you can integrate QuickChart.io into your app sheet app. This week, I'm going to go over how you can create a Gantt chart. Yes. It's been a very, a, 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 we, a lot of requests have come for that one. So we're going to go over that. Uh, and then of course, you know, at the end, I always like to do a live Q and A. So if you have any questions that you're working on right now, burning things that you need to get a question for, throw them in the chat and I'll get you covered. All right. That's all I got. Thanks for joining me. Like, subscribe, do all that good stuff. Let's get to it. <laughs> So as I alluded to, I've, I'm going to do something a little different next week. So next week, what is it? It's the Friday before Christmas. And so I figured the Friday before Christmas, I would do something a little different, right? Uh, so stay tuned for later on in the stream towards the end after the deep dive. That's when I'm going to go into what I'm going to do. And I'll show you what I've been working on this past week. It's pretty fun. But, all right, let's get to the actual meat and potatoes. What do we got going on this week? So there's been a couple of questions that came through, but there was one that was really, really, um, I don't know how to say it. It was a really good one, shall we say. So let's just get to the questions real quick. All right, the first question comes from Tetra... Met Tierra of FIFA 6884. Whew, took me a minute to figure out how to parse that out. Superb! They were looking at my... Whoa, this Zoom thing just went crazy. Uh, they were looking at my video that shows how to force a sink. And their question was, I'm going to try this soon, but I'm curious. How about force retrieve data? Because in the free version, the automatically update is around 30 minutes. Okay, so... Tetra, the, the 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 thing you're talking about there, the the background sync, right? Uh, that actually doesn't have that. That's not tied to a paid account or a free account. That's just natively part of how the AppSheet platform works. Um, and what it what they're talking about there with this 30 minute background thing is that if you just have like my app open and I leave it running and my like phone is on or it's on my PC and I just leave the browser open, every 30 minutes or so, that thing will re-grab some more information from the, it will, you know, check and make sure that things are updated. Uh, but that's not tied to uh, the free account like that. Even a paid account, even if you have an enterprise account, there's no like increase in the, the background sync frequency, if you will the that 30 minute thing is a standard thing now there are other things that are that have been thrown in to where it tries like if it there's things that can tell the system that okay we need to update and so there are some mechanisms that are in place but you know they don't explain how they work the ins and outs the ones and twos because i'm sure it's probably proprietary stuff they don't want anybody to you know copy but like there are some things in place that when certain things happen, the app does try to tell other apps like, hey, you need to update. So that's that. And as, as far as, um, you know, if you wanted to set your app up so that it would automatically retrieve data every so often, this is actually something that people have been trying to solve, if you will, solve this problem for a while now. Um, the general use case that I usually hear is we want to have a TV on the wall and we want to have an app on there with like a dashboard that's got some whatever's on it. And we want that thing to stay updated. Like when I push the thing over here, I want the TV to show that it happened. 
app sheet apps don't work that way, right? It's because it's, it's made for passivity and this, that, and whatever. So I generally advise people, if you're looking to do something like that, where you want like a display of something, well, you don't have, app sheet's not the solution for everything, right? That you don't have to use app sheet in order to make that display. All of your data is inside a Google sheet, I'm assuming. Well, you could make another Google sheet that's that is just, you know, it has like embedded charts or whatever. Or you can go to Data Studio and create a really, really good looking dashboard with analytics and this, that, and what that's going on from the data of your Google Sheet. The app is tied to your Google Sheet. So that's like where your primary interface and all the mechanisms of how we're messing with the data, all that happens inside the app. But then for all the displays that we have around, all of those are looking at a, a Google Data Studio, which is looking at the Google Sheet, which is always updated live. So your dashboard, right, on your TV is always updated that way. Google Data, Stu Google Data Studio has made a lot of inroads. They've actually natively tied AppSheet to your Data Studio. So you don't even have to go the route of, well, my, my data is not inside a Google Sheet. What do I do? You don't even have to do that. You can just, cool, go to my AppSheet app and get data from that app and then make your view for it and put that on a TV. That's generally the way that I would go with that. Instead of trying to get AppSheet to be the solution for that, you can make an AppSheet dashboard that would do what you want, but you're gonna have that problem of it doesn't update on the regular. You know what I mean? Hope it helps. Let me know if you have any follow-ups. That was really the only big deep question. A few of other ones were, you know, there's a problem with this. How do I do a small little thing here? that I've covered before and just kind of navigated them that way. All right, let's move on to the app sheet news. I figured I found out a fun little thing this week. Okay. All right. So starting off first, I'm going to cover the official app sheet news this week, right? So there's been a lot of really good bug releases. There's been, um, as, as is standard right now, the new desktop UX, that's getting st steady updates and bug fixes and new features. And I wouldn't say new features, but features of the platform that weren't working are now working. So steady progress on the new desktop UX experience. Can't wait for that to go live with all the bugs actually gone because yeah, it really does make a, that is a really slick looking interface for a desktop. The thing that is, uh, that I, that I picked out that was a, a, of note, right? For everybody is that, um, so cycle for site circular formulas, right? As in like, this is equal to this and this is looking at this. And then this is looking at that first thing. And so then it starts doing this it just keeps going forever um this is a problem that citizen developers face i mean, you know such as me because i'm i wasn't trained to think in the logic sense of like a computer programmer like you know they went to classes to learn about logic and this that and whatever and i don't have any of that and so anybody that's in the same boat as me where you're just finding the solution and trying to figure it out um these are common things that you can fall in because you might not be aware of how deep that is because it might be this is this this is this this is this and then this is looking at that thing way back over there so it's like four or five layers deep inside your system and you know if you're not if you're not building your app in the traditional sense of the way that a traditionally trained developer would because they wouldn't just dive in and start building the thing they'd sit down and think about what it is that they're trying to do they'd come up with a schema for their data like what tables are connected where they'd come up with like what sort of processes like the traditional sense it, the traditional way of developing an app is to plan ahead of time the citizen developer method is let's dive in <laughs> see what happens yeah <laughs> that'll be fun but then you run into these problems where you be because you're not you don't have that plan right you're down here and you're not thinking about what's happening over there and you're like oh yeah well this thing needs to be tied to that thing and you're on and you're not aware that like all of that's feeding down to the thing that you're on 
AppSheet has now put in a thing to where they will flag these as warnings. Before they, if, before they were never really caught, and if they were, they would just cause an error. They would just say, ah, you got a cycle formula, you got to figure out what you're doing. Um, it looks like now they've got a, um, a thing that will give you a bit more of a warning and a bit more of an explanation about what's going on. So, AppSheets uh, now flag cycle expressions as warning. For example, if you have three virtual columns defined as follows, the, if I can get this to zoom in and play, nice. A is equal to B, B is equal to C, and C is equal to A. So then we just got this thing going on. In this scenario, there would be no way to calculate the result because each value depends on another. Um, other examples include using this in a virtual column or this row in a virtual column that is also the key. Yeah, that would never work. AppSheet now flags these as cycle expressions as warnings. It's deployed to 100% of free users, 25% of paid users. Happy days. That should help clean up uh, um, some of the problems. I know a um, couple of weeks ago, maybe a couple of months ago now, time, It um, there was some issues that I ran into where there was some deeply nested cycle formulas and they caused some errors that were, I don't know, maybe mislabeled, right? The system caught the error, but it didn't quite know how to categorize that error. So it threw it as something else and it was kind of causing confusion with a lot of people. And yeah, seems like this is what's gonna um, clean that up. Happy days. The last thing I'm gonna talk about in this section is a fun little thing that I learned when I was uh, working on the thing that I'm gonna do next week. <laughs> um, I learned, so, okay, if you have a formatting rule and you put that formatting rule on an action and only on the action, if that action is then tied to a column so that it's viewable in line on that column, if the formatting rule is increasing the size of the text, right? Okay, it increases the size of the button not the text of the thing that it's attached to, which kind of makes sense because the formatting rule that's making, that's increasing the size is only tied to the action. It's not tied to the column and the action. But this was an interesting thing. It, it gave me the, uh, it, it, it brought forth the functionality in my mind that you could use this to stress inline actions. Do you know what I mean? Such as, let's say I've got, this, uh, I've got a, uh, a button on that's attached to a column like this, right? Okay. Now, like if that is the thing that they need to do next, and there's enough information inside the system that the system knows that they need to push that button next, well, we can create a formatting rule that's aware of all of this criteria that's looking for that. And when it sees it, it makes the thing bigger. So that I could be like, this is the one that you need to do. You could even have that tied to a system to where if you have the current user system installed, you could have a field on their, on their table, on their record, right? That is like a true false. And the idea could be, should I show help? Like, should I provide you with assistance of what to do next? And then if you turn that on, right, I could have a whole bunch of virtual columns that are show columns that have a formula inside there that says, if that flag is true, show this column and then put a whole bunch of stuff inside there that explains what's going on. Maybe some photos with like a circle and an arrow and then text that says what's happening. You could do things like this where it's like, okay, we know the order of operations. We know the next thing that you need to do is push this little ax button. And so, will make the axe button much bigger than everything else around it. So that's very clear. You need to press that button versus everything else. Fun little things like that. So that's what I learned this week in AppSheet. Thought I would share that with you guys. There's plenty of times I know where I've wanted the ability to stress a button over everything else because it's like, no, mate, you need to push this one right here, right now, push that button. And it was like, man, you know, you could color it. But anyways, this is great. Thought I would share. All right, that's enough of that. Let's move on to the deep dive. For the 
deep dive. Yes, continuing the ongoing series that I've been doing this month on integrating quickchart.io into your AppSheet app, right? So first I started with how to get started, right? And with that one, I created a line graph. If you head on over to my, my uh, AppSheet profile page um, from all my sample apps that I have available over there, you'll find quickchart number one. That is the app that I created a copy of before this live stream that I'm going to use in order to create the Gantt chart integration. I'm doing that because it kind of contains some of the bits that I already need, or at least demonstrates some of the bits. So it's easier to have that to go off of. Uh, if you would like to follow along for this deep dive section, head on over there to my profile, make a copy of the app, and we can join, you can join on along. All right, so a Gantt chart, right? The, the probably one of the most requested charts uh, for AppSheet forever like this is the one chart that they've never had inside their chart builder that everybody that's been building apps was like man i want a gantt chart right turns out this quick chart thing is actually very easy to get going it's almost as easy as the line graph and all of those other ones that are like the quickly adaptable ones it's almost as easy as that there's a little different but it's almost as easy so Let's dive in. So what have I, so I've gone over to quick chart and I have selected, gone to the quick chart and I went to the chart gallery. And then if you scroll down all the way down here to this lower section, keep going, keep going here, a time scale. Yeah, this is where you can find the Gantt chart sample. And you can see there's a candlestick right here, which is actually pretty helpful as well. Goals. <laughs> All right, so now that we're here, you can see this is the chart. Uh, this is the code that we've got for uh, the Gantt chart. And if you're looking at this and you've been following along in any of the other series that, in, in the, any of the previous videos in the series, you'll see that this code is actually pretty dang close to like what we were using with the line chart, right? You've got, if we zoom in here a little bit, you've if I can do, there it is. We've got like this labels section, which again is just like a, it's just an array. It's just a list of things. We've got this data, which is just a list. We've got background colors. We've got any, all of these annotations, which we've got that scale thing down here. Okay, so it's like almost all of this stuff is the same, same stuff. And that's what you're gonna find when you, when you work with QuickChart is that most of the code and everything that you need to use in order to generate the chart, generally the same. There's just little bits that are different depending on the one thing that you're doing. In this case, you can't do that. And, and when I'm doing a pie chart, I can do stuff with, you know, circular math and things of that nature. And then anyway, so let's move on. What do we need to do? I want to take this chart and I want to make something like this inside my app. Okay, so first I need data like this, right? So I need these categories type type of idea going on here. And then I need dates, right? So like this is the one, this is the start date, this is the end date. Um, if we break down the code that's going on here, if we just look in here, um, all of these things Every, the way that quick chart always works is that everything everything falls in line in the same order, right? So if I have five things, I have a label list, which is one, two, three, four, five. Then I have a data point list, which is in the same order, one, two, three, four, five. And then maybe I have colors that I wanna use for those, which is in the same order, one, two, three, four, five. It's critical that when you're building these lists that the data points match because it's it's not all in one, right? I have like, in this case, I have my labels, my data points and my colors. There's three separate lists. And so I have to, you have to make sure that one is the first one in all of those lists and number five is the fifth one so that there's not crossing the streams. Otherwise it's gonna get weird. So I've got that. And then, then we look down here. The other little thing that I need is the ticks, okay? ticks is the um how is what is the the min and the max so we're talking about a chart 
and oops, I disappeared. <laughs> there we go. We're talking about a chart. And so we have to have a start point. We have to have an end point, right? And if we go back over to the actual chart, so this is what this is establishing down here is we've got the min and the max on the ticks. And so if we look at the min, right, it's January 1st of 2021. And what do we have? January 1st of 2021, well, January at least. And then this other one, the end is 2022. If we look at the chart, where's the chart end? January of 2022. So that's what we've got to do is we've got to establish a list of our labels. We have to have a list of our data points. We can do our colors. And then we need to establish what's the low and what's the high. And then from that, we're basically done. If you wanted to include an annotation, so this part of the code is this part right here, is this line that's going on with this word of deadline. If you wanted to include something like that, that is this annotation section. But if we remove that, we break it. But yeah, you know, we just need to clean up some of the little bits, make sure that I everything's as it's supposed to be. That's it. I don't think that one's supposed to be there. There we go. Right? So now we got a nice, clean, simple Gantt chart. Okay, so I'm going to take this code and I'm going to copy this and I'm going to bring this over to my app sheet app. So let's go over here. And so where am I going to put this? This is going to go on the stores table. And so just to kind of store this data here for now, I'm going to create a new virtual column that will eventually be my final Gantt chart. So this is going to be store Gantt chart. And then we will just concatenate and drop that in there. Okay. Remember though. Okay. Now one of the, one of the things to kind of remember when you're working with the quick chart in app sheet, you'll notice all of the inner quotes, they're all single ticks. Okay. It's easier. It's easier if you switch all of those around to double quotes so that the internal quotes are double. And then the outer quotes that goes around all of the code is single quotes. It's easier if you do that because um, when you use a single quote, it, it's basically hard coding telling the system. I don't care what's inside the, between these two, it's text. It, it could be whatever's inside, I don't care, it's text. Whereas when it's double quote, AppSheet's built in some stuff to where eh, sometimes it, it doesn't make that a text. It looks at what's going on inside there and does different things. So single text is the way to go. The code that I got though, all contains single text. So I'm gonna take this out of here. I use a program called Notepad++ for my notepad, for my note taking stuff. Highly suggest you do it, it's fantastic. So I wanna replace all the single ticks with a double tick. All right, now I can take this back over here, put it back inside, and now I can wrap the whole thing with a single tick at the front and a single tick at the bottom and close my concatenate and we're starting. Yeah, okay. Uh, might as well throw in while I'm at it. Okay, there's some other things. I need that starting bit for the chart. Uh, so if I just come back here and we go to the home page, it's right here. It's the easiest place to get it. We can put that up here and that needs an equal sign. And then all of this stuff needs to be um, encoded. And then I believe we have to do another concatenate in, in the encode URL. If I remember right, make sure that validates. So it's happy days. Cool. Good. Happy to go. This is going to be an image and we'll just save it. So it's there. Okay. If we go back to our chart and I'm going to get rid of the annotation. So this is what we're starting with, right? So what do we need to do? So first we need our list of labels. All right, well, what data am I trying to put inside my chart? I guess that's the first thing that I need to establish. 
Um, so right now, the chart has the line graph inside it. And so the line graph contains two data sets, the 2020 sales prices um, and the 2021 sales prices. So um, this sort of stuff, since it's like monthly sales data, it doesn't lend itself very well to a Gantt chart. A Gantt chart's more like, well, we've got five construction phases and we started phase one here and phase two. That's, it's more suited for that. So to facilitate that, I've included inside the table that came with the app that you copied, another couple of tables inside there. One is construction projection. And then the other one is construction summary. I can't remember, let's go get it. But the idea is I'm gonna use these tables. Yeah, so you have project, uh, construction progress and Prog what's going on there? Oh, progress projections and then progress summaries. So I want to do the summaries. I'm going to bring those inside here and I'm going to make a Gantt chart over all of these summary, pro the construction summary things. The idea, like, you know, just conceptually so that we're kind of, you know, in the same mind space here. The idea is this is the construction of the store like you know these are stores and whatever so this is the construction schedule and this is the actual summary of the construction that happened sure okay i have the construction progress summaries here so we need to connect these to the site so i'm gonna make this a reference to the site or to the stores table and then look at all these so make sure that they're all something that matches what data is inside it. So I've got to, if we go to the table itself, so if I go and we view the source and we go to progress summaries, you can see this is what I've got for my columns. I have obviously the site that it belongs to, what phase is it, what was the start date, what was the end date, what uh, progress percentage are we in, and is it done or not? Okay, so what I'm putting on the uh, chart right, is I need to create a list of the phases that we're doing. And then each of my data points has a start and an end. Okay, so if we go to my chart, and we start looking at like, how am I going to fit that data into this chart? Well, I need to create a singular list of all of the parts out of these records for each store. So we go back here, we go back here. And we look at our Hold on. Let's make this the key. It, it it didn't keep my already established ID key. There we go. Good enough. And I want to make this like that. Just for fun. Okay. On stores, we go down here. We have now our related construction progress records. Okay, so out of these, I want to do the same thing that I did when I was creating my line graph, right? So I have these records that are whatever's going on and I want to put inside this chart. Out of these records, I need to extract the labels. And then I need to uniquify that so that I don't have any duplicates. So just like I did up here where I have a separate thing for my label, I need to make another column for my label. So we're gonna call this, and I'm gonna call this store Gantt labels. And if we come into here, we scroll all the way down and insert that virtual column of all of our progress summaries. Okay, now what do I want out of this? So if I go to my stores, I want this column. So I'm gonna copy its name, come back over here, and we're doing a list dereference. And so when you do a list dereference, you don't use the dot. Okay, so what is this doing? This is gonna create a list of all of the phases that correspond to whatever construction progress is we have for the store. Okay, now some of these might duplicate themselves. Who knows, right? Like these all look like they're singular, but they could be duplicates inside here. So I'm gonna wrap, in order to make sure that doesn't happen, I'm gonna wrap the whole thing in unique. So that removes, if I can spell unique, That's gonna remove any duplicates that are inside that. Now I'm also gonna sort this 
so that they're in the right order in case the records were input into the system in a different order. Okay, now I don't need to see this and you can leave this in enum. I'm just gonna change it to text just so it's standard. Okay, so now I've got my list of labels and if we go look at it, when I save, you'll see this is my phase one, two, three, four, five. Phase one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so this list, right, is pretty close to what I need to put here. But if you look at the chart here, you'll notice each of the things is wrapped in a quote. Okay, so I need to do that for my data, for this list of data points. So I might as well do it here and change this list. So like this column is a list of things. I might as well come in here and just change this to a text, maybe a long text. And then like wrap this whole thing in a uh, concatenate. And so what do we need to do? So this is a list that has a comma separator. So if you look, you know, back here in the, in the dark part, right? There's this space comma space separating everything. So what I need to do is I need to take that space comma space and I need to remove it and replace the space comma space with a line break and, or not with a line break, but with a quote, space comma space quote. So I need to add quotes around the space comma space separators inside there and then add a quote at the front, and add a quote at the end. And then that will give me that whole chunk that I need to feed to the, the quick chart in order for it to make my labels. So I need a quote at the front. So this is where using single quotes works because if you tried to do, if you tried to do this, oops, whoa, 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 whoa. If you tried to do that little double quote, single quote, double quote, that wouldn't work. It'd be weird. You'd get all kinds of weirdness happening. So single tick, double quote, single tick the first part of my concatenate that I want to do. And then I want to take this sort unique, blah, 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 blah. I want to take this whole thing and I want to wrap this in a substitute. So I'm saying, take this, concatenate it out. And I'm going to, okay. So I'm going to take my list and I'm going to wrap it in a concatenate. Now, the reason that I have to wrap this in a concatenate is because substitute is expecting a text value. If I feed that thing a list, it's gonna not know what to do. Maybe it'll return an error, probably won't. And in most at most like likelihood, it'll probably just process the first thing inside what's going on there. It should return an error. Cause substitute needs a text. So we take our list, wrap it in concatenate, that turns our list into a text type, okay? So now substitute has what it needs. What am I trying to do? I need to substitute out space comma space. And I wanna, I wanna change it for, now this is where you need to use single ticks, a double quote, space comma space, double quote, and then close it with a single tick. And if I close my substitute, and then the last thing I need to do is I need to include a closing quote at the very end to close the whole list inside quotes. Now, when this comes back as a green, making sure that it does. Come on, come on. All right, I ain't waiting for you. Oh, I didn't want to delete that. Thank God they have an undo. Uh, if we save this, we come back and we look at what's going on down here. Okay, that is what we need to feed to our chart, right? Each thing is inside double quotes. We've got them all separated with a comma separator. Cool, we're good to go. Okay, so we go back here and we look at what we've got going on there. That's gonna fit that like we need. Okay, the next thing that we need is this list of data points. Okay, but if you look at what's going on here, this is a, a multi-dimensional array. It's a list of lists, right? So we've got this outer list of this is all the data that starts here and ends here, right? So it's like, this is this data block. And then inside here, you'll notice each one of these has this comma separator inside the whole thing. So each one has its own square bracket 
and a comma separator on the inside. Okay, we've got to come up with this same thing, this list of lists like this in this format with all these little square brackets and everything so that it's so that when we feed this to quick chart it has everything that it needs in the right way okay now this means that we need to prepare some of this information ahead of time so that when we get the list of things to show the list is already prepared in the appropriate format and then all we got to do is just list that what am i talking about I'm talking about I need to construct this little thing ahead of time the um, for each row that I'm trying to show right I need to go through and make that little string you don't do you don't need to do the new date this that, and whatever you could I will just because might as well um, but you could just drop dates in there if you wanted so what do I what do I want Go back here, come down here. All right. So, all of these data points are coming from our progress summaries. And so, this is the place where we need to create that data point that I'm talking about. This individual line that I'm trying to have a whole bunch of. So, I'm going to take this, I'm just going to copy this because that's basically the thing that I need to create. I come back over here, I'm gonna create a virtual column and I'm gonna make this value. I'm gonna just drop that inside here. Okay, I'm gonna change all of the single ticks on the inside to quotes. And then I'm gonna wrap the whole thing inside single ticks. I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna do that. And then I'll drop down here and close my concatenate. Okay, that is the essence of what I need to do inside this thing, but I need to replace the start, the, the first, which is the minimum date, and I need to replace the second date, which is the maximum date, with whatever these are from this particular record, right? So I have a start date and an end date here. So I'm gonna take my start date, copy the name of the column. So I need that to be in this part right here. So I'm gonna highlight what I wanna, I'm gonna highlight what I want to get rid of, I'm gonna hit delete. I'm gonna drop down a couple of lines. Okay, I'm giving myself space to work. So up here, I need to close the quote, hit a comma. Now I'm in back inside concatenate and I can drop my column and then bring this back up here and turn a single quote back on so that we go back into the text and now we're good to go. And now do the same thing for my end date, which is the second one. Select the data that I wanna get rid of, hit delete, hit enter a few times, give myself some space, come back up to the string that we just split, single tick, close it, do a comma, drop down to a new line. Now you're back inside concatenate. And so get the column that you want, copy that, come up here, put it in there, comma, bring all of that back up, and then do the single tick to go back inside text again. And so like now we're in text and we're done. And if we test this so that we can see what this looks like, right? Okay, so this is missing an end date. So that's gonna be a problem. But if we look, everything in here that has a date, right, works. It's that is now that. Cool. So now we've got this here, we can save this, we can close this, we give this a name of uh, prog sum gant code bit. <laughs> Not sure what to call that, you know what I mean? It's like a little chunk of the code that we need for the overall everything, I don't know. The thing I would say is, um, so I'm making this column a virtual column I wouldn't make this a virtual column. I'm doing it this way because it's fast. I just don't want to add it into the table because I don't want to go through the regenerate because sometimes it gets stuck. I would make this a physical column because the data inside this column only changes when you change the record. It doesn't need to be dynamically computed. It's not like the end date on this is coming from somewhere else. Do you know what I mean? If it was coming from somewhere else, then I need it to be in a virtual column so it's dynamic. Otherwise, I'd have to create some sort of update mechanism to make all of that happen, and that's a whole lot of work making a virtual column is a whole lot easier. 
But when you have a data point like this, where it doesn't change other than when I change the record, well, that doesn't need to be virtual, make it physical. Because if you leave it virtual, that's just adding virtualization to your app, right? Your app is syncing, it's loading, and it's got to compute all these virtual columns. It's got to do all these slices. It's got to do all of this. It's got to do all of that. But it doesn't need to do any, some of that because those data points never change. You could just record the data point when you change the record and be good. I'm just doing it now for it's fast. When I, I will eventually make this physical column. Just FYI. All right. PSA over. I have my code bit. All right, so this is every little thing that I need to throw inside my chart here. And then I can just create a list inside my chart to get this, okay? The next thing that I need to do is colors, right? So if we look at these, we can see if I break these into uh, like a nice little line breaked Thing like this so you can see all the elements so look there's an undefined in there Ooh, that's fun okay so right if we look at this part one two three four five one two three four five one two three four five that's what's going on here one two three four five six one two three four five six oh part six oh, i'm sorry yeah i missed the, I missed the last one so there's six and six and six all right so if you look at what's going on over here right so undefined is going to be a gray and then you can set the other colors and then if you want it to be grayed out, like if you want it to be semi-transparent, if you use the RGBA style, the, the uh, fourth parameter here is what is the transparency? And you can see this bottom one is set to 0.2. So that would be this guy down here that's semi-transparent. But anyways, so I'm just gonna leave these colors the way that they are. Um, no, nah, no, nah, you know what? I don't want to do that. I I'm going to make these, I'll, I'll make them whatever they are. So I need to create a list of colors, right? Okay, well, each of these colors corresponds to one of these data points, which means this color came from that record, right? We just created those summaries on those records, which means that record needs a color that it, that, that record needs to be displayed as. So let's go and make another virtual column for this thing over here. And then what do I wanna do? Well, I could base the color off of maybe the progress percent. Sure, why not? So this is gonna be prog sum Gantt color. And so then what am I really doing? So if I just come back to the chart and I just say, I'm just gonna take these. I'm just gonna use these as my options. And like, I'll even take the undefined one too. Yes. So what do I want? I'm really trying to do a switch statement based on the progress percentage. Okay, so these are my options that I wanna use. But some of these are duplicates. So we can get rid of the duplicates. Like this one is the same as that one. And then this one is the same as the one above it. I can get rid of that. Okay. And then undefined. So these are the colors that I want. I wanna do like yellow for being complete, which is this color. So like if it's one, since we're dealing with a, a percentage here, it will be a decimal. So if the percentage is one, set it to this i can get rid of that and like i want to include the quotes so like you see how i've got this wrapped with an outer double quote can't do that gotta switch those around single then a double so that the internal ones are the doubles the outer ones are the single ticks it's a thing you just gotta wrap your mind around so if the progress is that it's gonna be yellow if the progress is, okay, yeah, see, I can't do a switch because this, I'd have to like hard code this. I want to establish ranges instead. So it's gonna have to be a bunch of if statements with some ands. So like ifs, the progress summary equals, ooh, whoa, what did I do there? Equals one, there we go. Set yourself to the yellow color. 
I'll just do this for now so that I know what I'm doing. So, so I know what these are. <laughs> Red, yellow, okay. So if the progress summary is one, there we go, set yourself to this. If the progress summary, now we gotta do an and statement. If the progress summary is less than one and, 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 wait for it. All my indents have gotten weird. So give me a moment. I'm going to clean those up. There we go. There we go. All right. So, and then there's a closing here. So if it's less than one, but it's greater than or equal to pick a number, pick a number, pick a number, any number, any number. I don't know. We'll say 75%, 0 0.75, right? If it's that, if it's in that range, and I want this color, bring that up here to be RGB, this, that, and whatever. Okay, now I don't want this, this red. I'll do the red for like, we're at like 1% or something, like less than 10%. But like this yellow, I see what I see what I can do with this. So this yellow, but this has got a 20% visibility on it. Okay. So like I'll change this to like <laughs> zero point. Oh, here we go. Oh, you know what I could do? So I could just base this opacity on the percentage. Oh, totally. Oh man, I'm doing that. All right. <laughs> Switching gears. Switching gears. If the status, if the status uh, equals ongoing, I think, let me look. Yep, okay, so in progress. Okay, so if the status is in progress, concatenate together this yellow. I wanna stop it right there with the percentage of the progress. Oh yeah, because it's decimal already. <sighs> oh, that's fun. Oh man, so it like, oh, that's fun. Yeah, 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 I like that. I like that, that's pretty, that's gonna be fun. And then drop, bring this all back up, get rid of the number, and then go back into the quote, okay. Oops, back into the quote. I'll get rid of my little note here. Okay, so if we're in progress, we're yellow with some sort of whatever. Um, otherwise, we are complete, in which case, well, we'll make it red. Sure. Why not? Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Okay. Gotta switch this around so it's an inner quote and then a double and then a single quote. And then, okay, I need to close my concatenate here. So if we're in stag if we're in progress, concatenate whatever the progress summary is into the opacity part of our color. Otherwise, we're a hundred percent red. Or whatever that color is. You know what? I'll just change this. We can do, we'll do both. <laughs> we'll make this green. Okay. And so if we save this, right? So now we've just got this virtual column. And again, I would make this color since it's based on the row data, make that based on the row, the, the actual thing. Um, okay. So if we go to our construction thing. We can see here's our Gantt color, right? Oh, that's nice. Perfect. If we go back to our chart and we look at the data points that we need and like look at the format, what it needs to be. So it needs a quote, blah, 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 blah. Quote, blah, 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 blah. Perfect. So now if I list this for all of these phase summary records, I'll get this sort of list. Perfect. 
The last thing that I need to figure out is what are my ticks? Like what are the, um, the, the min and the max? And that's easily established by doing that over here on the store level, right? I've got this related construction progress record summaries. Okay, all I've got to do is get the min and the max out of this and we're good to go. Okay, so what do I got here? I've got my labels that I had to construct. I've got my, on the child records, I've got my code bit that I had to construct over there. I've got a thing that does that determines what color needs to be used, right, on the child record. And so now, now that I've got these two bits here on the child record, I can bring those into the parent as a list. Now I don't need to do like what I did here where I create this store Gantt labels. Like I can take this formula and just put this inside my Gantt chart image, right? So like if I come back to my image formula, and we go and we find the part that I want to replace is this labels bit right here, right? Okay, so highlight what you want, hit delete, hit enter a few times, give yourself some space to work. Okay, now come back up to this string that you broke, single tick to close it, comma, because we're inside a concatenate. And now I can drop that formula that I just copied. Okay, now I don't need the concatenate part because we're already in concatenate. Um, I got, you can see there's a, a, a single quote that's in the thing right here. So I can just make this part of this guy up here. So like I can add the single quote there and get rid of this part. And then we've got all the substitute stuff. We've got the closing quote. I need to get rid of this closing parenthesis cause that belonged to the original concatenate and then bring all this stuff that I moved, bring that back up and put it right there. There we go. All right, so now this code is doing all that substitute stuff, creating my label part. I'm gonna save it. That way it gets saved in case something happens. I have that part of what I'm doing. If we go back now, so I can delete this virtual column that I made. Cool. Now, what do I need? I need out of this related construction progress summaries, I need to create a list of all of these code bits, right? If we go back to my chart, go back to the image code that I'm working on. So now I'm talking about this part right here. So what do I need to replace? Okay, everything between this square bracket and this square bracket is what needs to be replaced. So if I go before this to that, and hit delete and enter a few times, give myself some space to work. Okay, go back up here, single quote, to close it. And now we're back inside our original concatenate. And so what do I need to do? I need to, out of these, get that virtual column. Save that real quick and go get the name of my code bit column. Come back. So right here where I'm constructing my data set, I need to do a list dereference of all of those code bits. Okay. Now, we go back to our chart. Let's make sure that we don't need to do anything special. So the code bit that I've prepared has the quotes around each thing. It has all the parts in the middle that it needs. So I don't need to do any of this text stuff. And the comma separator will be added when, I, when this is concatenated out as a list. So I've already done this part. The comma separator part is done for me. I don't need to do anything else. That's all I need to do. Just drop this little list dereference here inside this data part and we're good to go. So do that, bring this up here, do a single quote to start my things back off and bring that back up. There we go, that's all I needed to do there. Next I need to do the colors. And the colors is the exact same thing of what I did right here. So I might as well just copy that because all I gotta do is change the last bit. Come in here, find the bit that I need to change. So it's all of these things here. Delete, give myself some space, go back up, close the thing. Now I'm back in my original concatenate, drop that, go get the name of this column that I actually need. So I don't need the code bit, I need 
the color and that's the last of those Come back to my image change the second part and now this is that list of colors now let's go back and make sure do i need to do anything else no i guess i was a uh, I was talking about this one when I was really creating this list, but you can see this is the this is the thing I'm talking about with Quick Chart. Everything is basically very standardized. What you're doing in one place is the same thing that you need to do in another place. There's probably just a few little things that you need to change. Okay, so that's my list of colors. Go there, drop down, oops, drop down, do a single tick to start the quote back. The, the text bit, draw this back up. Okay, keep going down. What do we need to do? All right, now we need to do this ticks thing. So the new date, and then we just need to replace this quote. Well, not the quote, but we need to replace the date. So highlight it, hit delete, do enter a couple of times, come up here, do a single tick that puts you back inside your, uh, back inside the concatenate. So now what do I need? I need the minimum date out of these records, right? So I need to do something like this again, because I need to extract out all of the dates, but I need to wrap that in a min. So min, and then drop that. But I need to change, I'm not getting the color, I need the start date. So what is the minimum start date for this thing? And put that there, okay? That gets me this minimum tick, right? Okay, so now I can bring this all the way back up here. Do a single quote to get me back inside um, the text part. And then come down here and redo all of that for this maximum date. Select the part that I want, hit delete, do enter a couple times, give myself some space. I can just copy this formula right here and drop that here. So I need to close my quote, my text. And I can drop this, and instead of doing min, I want this to be max. And then come here and do a single quote to start text back up again, and then bring this all the way back up. And that concludes the construction of my Gantt chart. With this, I should come back, and when this loads, if I go and I look at my store, and I go and I look down here, hey, look at that, we've got a Gantt chart. Happy days. It's kind of weird. It's a little weird looking. Let's move the Gantt chart to the top of the detail since that's the one I'm working on. Hey, look at that. We got a Gantt chart. It's a little weird looking. It's a little weird looking. It seems like there's something going on with the, um, like everything's green. So there's something wrong with the code for the ones that are not complete. All right, let's go look at that. So it's the monthly progress summaries. This color doesn't seem to be doing something. So let's wait for this, do a test and see what this says. Yeah, see, oh, you know what it is? I bet you it's this. Yeah, I bet you it's that. Like it doesn't take a double decimal. Like, look, if we come back over here and I say, uh, like, I wanna set this to 2.1. Well, all right, well, that didn't, that didn't break. All right, no, yeah, it totally accepts. Yeah, 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 okay, so it will accept this. Okay, so that's not the part, that's not the problem. All right. So like this would be acceptable. Like if I take this and I come over here and I drop that as, let's do this as the first one. Right, it's still there, but it's really, 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 really faint because it's at 0 0.09 opacity, yeah. But like that totally worked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still there. Okay, so that's not the problem. Um, this is obviously working. Okay, maybe the problem is because I'm I'm doing two. Like I'm doing, you know, the word green and then RGBA. So okay, let's try and see. Can it, does this break if I put the word Arf. green? Okay, that's not the problem. So you can switch back and forth and do whatever you want there. That's not the issue, okay? So what's the issue? Okay, so quotes, double quotes inside everything, double quotes around everything. Okay, so that, this, this, not that one, this one. 
that looks like it's fine. So this formula looks like it's good. So that's not the problem. Okay, the problem then is something inside the chart formula. It doesn't want to display these other ones. So if we come back in here, the labels are obviously working. We have one through five. Okay, the min and the max is doing whatever it's supposed to do. It's the just the colors, right? Data, background colors, here we go. Okay, so something in here is throwing it off. So if we look at what this chart code looks like, you're gonna get a giant URL like this. So I'm gonna copy this. And if you, if you go to the, the internet and you search for um, URL decode and encode. So this is a really good little tool where you can throw a URL that's been encoded inside it and it will decode it. So then you can get the text that this thing is and like we can come in here and we can look at it and see what's wrong with this, right? So like we start looking. So maybe the problem is this right here, this new date that's empty. Like I bet you that's, that's what's going on because I'm, I'm betting if we go look at this, one of these data points. Yeah, see like there's no end date because it's in progress. Okay, so that's the problem. So maybe what we do is we put, I like, all right, if this was live data, all right, so we're getting into a little weirdness now because I'm working with randomly generated fake data. If this was real and these things were not, were still in progress, right? Like what I'm thinking I would do then is I would, in that chart for the things that are in progress, I'd put today's date. This is gonna make the chart look a little weird. I'm gonna do that, but I'm just putting a little PSA. It's gonna make this chart look a little weird because this is all sample data and it, yeah. So dates are gonna be really funky, but that's what I'm gonna do. So all of these things that are in progress that don't have a completion date, I'm gonna put the, I'm gonna change the date that, that I'm providing inside the code bit, right? Cause that's where the actual problem is lying. If we go back to our, yeah, here. So like this is the code bit that was made for what was going for this data point. I have to have something here. Like I'm betting that's exactly what's going on. This needs something. So close this. That's fine. Go to my code bit formula. All right, this end date. So I'm gonna wrap this end date in an if. I'm gonna say if is blank, oops if is blank end date, right? That's blank, use today. Otherwise, use the end date. That way there's always something inside these. Now when this comes back, I'm expecting this chart to look differently. Happy days, look at that. And then the thing that I could do is I could come back here and go to my chart and on my image well okay no no, no. the oh yeah, oh yeah 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 look 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 what i forgot to do so on my max date i'm pulling the the max of the start date it's not what i need i need the max of the end date that's probably going to have a huge impact on how my chart looks like you see what it looks like now it's probably going to look a whole lot different now yeah. Okay. Now it looks like a real Gantt chart. You know what I mean? Like, all right, we're working with something now. Uh, yeah, look at that. Happy days. All right. And if we, uh, if we cycle through with some of these other ones, Hey, that's kind of cool. Hey, happy. Oh, look at that one. Oh yeah. The, the opacity is really taking over on that one. That's fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So that let's like, we change this to where like the cover is the Gantt chart <laughs> and like okay so instead of the store photo we come down here and we do the Gantt chart Ooh, that's kind of interesting looking we can make those bigger yeah anyways now i'm just kind of fiddling around farting around with it now it's like oh this is kind of fun oh i'm gonna make this look a little nicer hey uh, oh yeah whoa that's a little much like that's not too bad that's kind of like all right whatever there's something going on there but anyways hey got a gantt chart that's how you do it there's uh there's obviously some you know ones and twos of how to do that but I, if 
like, yeah, this took me like a half hour to get done. But if you notice, there was very straightforward what I was doing there. I needed a list of the data. The I needed to make the little data bit. I needed a thing that told it what color that needs to be. And that was about it. That's like pretty much the extent of your data setup for a Gantt chart. Happy days. Uh, let me know if you have any difficulties or if there's any other bits that you would like to add into this. Um, uh, as I said, I'm doing something fun for next week's live stream, the Friday before Christmas. But for the stream after that, I actually have plans. To, um, uh, I have Ian planned to do an interview at some point. We won't do it live because of schedules. Well, I'll pre-record it. But uh, Ian is the the guy that in that put together Quick Chart. Like he he's the man that made it. Uh, so I'm gonna have him come in. We're gonna discuss it, talk about it a little bit, the ins and outs. Um, and if you have so if you have any questions that you'd like to know what's going on with quick chart like what can i do what can't i do what struggles are you having let me know because i'll propose them to ian and we'll get some feedback from him and then the week after that um the that is the last week of december is when i will be showing that video in that live stream i'm also going to go over a lot of the trouble points that people face when working with app sheet and quick charts. And so if you have any difficulties that you're facing, if you have any problems that you can't figure out, or if there was something that you did figure out that was a pain for you to figure out, please let me know. Send me a comment on YouTube and the community. What find me some way, email me multitechvisions at gmail.com, whatever. Let me know what difficulties or whatever you're having with quick chart in app sheet, because I'm going to do a Siri. I'm going to do a video where I'm going to go over all of those and cover how to fix them. Cool. That's all I got for this one. Let's move on to the live chat, shall we? All right, Gantt charts, pretty nice looking. Yeah, these little things like this, it's kind of nice, right? Thanks for sticking around and watching everybody. I see there's no questions anybody has yet. And if you got your chance right now, I'm gonna stick around for a few more minutes. I got some other things I gotta run off and do, but if you're working on a project and you got something that you need help on, I'll be happy to help you in this live chat section right now. So as, a, as we wait for people to uh, populate their questions, if they have any, if not, that's fine. Let's get to the teaser that I said. So earlier in the live stream, I said that you know Friday before Christmas is next week. I'm gonna do something fun for that. So um, recently, what I've my recent rabbit hole that I've dived down is OpenAI. I don't know if you've been paying attention to what's going on over there. The the Chat GPT thing is the newest thing that you know it's the newest kid on the block that everybody's playing with and talking about. They have a whole bunch of really interesting stuff over there. And uh, I've been playing around with some of the stuff and looking at what's possible and how can you integrate what they have over there in your app sheet app. Things like Dolly 2, the ability to generate images. Now that doesn't really serve very much of a business, business uh, purpose. Maybe it could, who knows, we'll see where it goes. But they have other things like a large language model that you can feed a crap load of text to and then ask it a question about that text. So like somebody sends you a 500 page PDF, you can't feed all 500 pages. There's limits, you know, to size and processing and this, that, and whatever. Um, but you could create a process that would then ingest all of that data. The this AI would read it and then you could ask the AI questions. Like, was there anything bad inside there? Like, what do they say? Did they change this or like whatever, whatnot? Those are the types of things that they have available over there. They've got the ability to where you can send, uh, they've got a completion endpoint for an API where you can send it text and you can say, you can give it a prompt as in like, how would you change this so that it did whatever? And the AI looks through that and makes the change. I was talking to a buddy of mine uh, last week Somebody where we used to play D&D &D all the time. I'm a role player. I like to play role playing games. Uh, and <laughs> and we, I was talking about how it's really kind of creepy sometimes how this AI comes back with some of these answers. And he's like, man, it'd be really kind of fun to see how they'd play D&D. &D. Yes, it would. 
You are very correct. You are very right. That would be a very interesting thing. So what did I do? I made an app sheet app that allows you to essentially play D and D play a role playing game with open AI. So next week, what am I going to do? We're going to go over and we're going to have nice little, we're going to have a fun little story time with AI. I've put together an app that allows you to basically role play with an AI. You can feed it. This is the game we're playing. These, this is the scene we're in. It's your turn. This is what you see. As in, you walk into the dark cave and there's a dragon slumbering in front of you. In fact, let's see what the AI would do with that. Just as a teaser. <laughs> and so like, if I come here and I go to this person's turn and I come in here and I say, you find a sleeping dragon inside a dark cave. And uh, since this is a, an ongoing story, I'll be like, suddenly you find yourself in yourself in a dark cave with a slumbering dragon. Now, the idea is you can feed this thing prompts like that, as in we're telling a story. What do you do next? You're playing this character. What do you do next? And this thing will... Take all of that, take the story that's happened so far, come up with the next idea. I keep my hand on the hilt of my weapon just in case, but creep slowly closer in an effort, effort to get a better look at the dragon. Hmm. And what's happening right now is I've also integrated Dolly 2, the image generation platform. And so the system is generating an image, which is currently broken. I need to fix it. Which is currently generating, and it would generate an image showing what's going on. And if I give you a small little example of this, such as uh, inside the great hall of the celestial realm. Uh, I fed it a little more than that, but then it generated this image. So I have an app sheet app that allows you to say, this is the scene that we're in. This is the game we're playing. You are playing as this character. This just happened. What do you do? And based on that, it comes up with what the, resp what the player response would be. And it generates an image of the action that it said that it took. The system also generates images that are a summary of the turn that happened. It generates an image and a a uh, alliterative summary of the scene when it's over, as well as a novel that is the game. As in, I queried this AI, I fed it all the stuff that happened in the game, and I said, all right, with that story, generate a book. Chapters, dialogue, all of that. And I got images to add to it too. So next week, I'm gonna do story time with AI. Join in the chat. Uh, I'm going to make this app available so that you can't, uh, you can't copy it, right? But I'm going to make it to where when I'm doing my live stream, I'll have a URL that you can go to that will allow you to submit an idea for the current turn that's on. For the current scene that we're doing, you can submit like, well, all right, well, what do you want? What query would you like? What prompt would you like to give the AI for its turn to see what it comes up with? And we'll do this nice little collaborative story time thing. And at the very end, if you want, you can throw your email inside of the thing and I'll send you a copy of the PDF that's generated at the end. All of this, just because it's Friday before Christmas, we'll do something fun. <laughs> that's what I got planned for next week, man. Should be a lot of fun. All right, I see there's no questions, so we will. All right, thanks for joining. I appreciate it. Stick with me next week. This is going to be a lot of fun. Start coming up with ideas of like, you know, I don't know. Just think Lord of the Rings. Think The Hobbit. Think, you know, fantasy role-playing game. Start coming up with nice little ideas that you'd like to see done. And we're going to go through and tell a story with this AI. It should be fun to see what comes up out. See what comes up out of it. That's all I got this week. Thanks for joining me. I do appreciate it. Make sure you like, subscribe, do all of that stuff. If you really like what I do and you want to support me, head on over to Patreon. It's 10 bucks a month. 
you get access to a boatload of tools and things that I'm making and I'm coming up with new stuff all the time. Hint, hint, AI. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Enjoy your weekend. Stay happy, stay healthy. And remember, when you hit a roadblock when you're working on your app sheet app, say it with me. Keep calm and app sheet on! See you in the community, everybody. Have a good one.